When more and more people in Europe will be driving and charging an electric car, this will have a major effect on the energy network. In this video, we're going to find out everything about energy flexibility. What are the opportunities and the challenges of connecting millions of electric cars and their batteries to the electricity grid? And of course, who's in charge? In this video, we'll talk about the importance of flexibility, the unique part that electric vehicles play in the transition, and the necessary steps to take. So the challenge is that a lot of electric cars will charge at the same time. So we'll have a peak burden on the electricity grid. Then it's like on the highway when you have too many cars, arriving at a point at the same time they have a lot of congestion then no car even moves and that is also the problem with the electricity network that if at a point in time everybody is charging the car then there's too much pressure on the electricity network that it cannot handle it then it will fail and that is sometimes the part of the story that people don't really look at because we want the cars we want everything and we assume some way somehow that the network will be there because we are we are not used to it in yeah. the Netherlands that it's always there we always use it most let's say general programs on television and so on they, they already address the issues that okay we don't always have uh, solar energy we don't always have wind so we have to keep, keep track on storage and then we don't always know that electricity is at the right place so that's the next step so we see a kind of development of our common understanding of the constraints and limitations. I think it's paramount that we explain it to the general public because a lot of things that have to change are also policy guided. And the policy is, is made by policy makers and policy makers, they are voted by the public. Sometimes it's hard to find uh, the systemic perspective in the, in the, in the fact that, that uh, people want to can optimize within their own confines, but to have the optimal system design, you need to work together. Uh, but sometimes there's no real regulatory basis to work together, or the thing that needs to be done, nobody's sure who should do it. So, uh, this big battery for flexibility, who's going to pay for it? Who's going to maintain it? Is it my role? Is it your role? We're unsure. One beautiful thing with electric cars is that we have batteries on wheels. It's not just a mode of transport. It's from an energy perspective a very interesting battery. Energy flexibility is a, a key aspect in there. So we need products like batteries, like flexible heat pumps, but also a smart charging to facilitate this. The current storage systems we have, they are more like call it stationary storage. So if we put a storage here in Arnhem or in Eindhoven, it will remain there. It's always in Eindhoven, it's always in Arnhem, it's always at where you located it. And you all can only use it at the location where it is placed. But with electric vehicles, the good thing is that when you store energy, it moves. So it's like tank uh, fuel tanks on, on wheels. So you, you can store energy at one location and those cars moving to another location is like moving a whole lot of energy. That is a huge benefit. It is something that is only unique to electric vehicles. You charge them, you can use the energy in the car at a different location. And imagine hundreds, thousands, millions of cars having the ability to charge and relocate the energy. That is great flexibility. So I think the government should take an, the initiative to bring people together and to see, uh, to really support this growth. So I think this, this program should be able to help really. Yeah, so we should come up with a, a vision how we're going to use energy flexibility in the future. Of course, now there are market models in place or many companies working on energy flexibility, earning money with it. But this flexibility is a means for multiple goals. And if we want to use it for all of these goals, then we should have a better vision. I think also as a government, how we're going to get there. And we can support that with research, exploration of new ideas, development of new products. There's a new role that starts to appear. We all have some flexibility as a solar panel, as an EV, as a house, as a building. Uh, but who is managing that? It seems that a role is missing of an aggregator, of a smart charging service provider. That role is there in pilots and in demos, but it needs to become more mature. So in terms of who is in charge of balancing that all, there's work to be done. It's a puzzle to know who should be the initiator. I think you will see that all these parties should be able to have a common vision, a common goal talking with each other and trying to align because you will need each other along the line. So as long as we'll be heading in the same direction, it doesn't matter who's in charge, it's just as long as we go there. Exactly, that is the point, that is the point. If our destination, if our goals, everything are aligned, then who is going to be in charge, it shouldn't be a problem.